Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I'll be talking about OCD, its origin and prognosis. Prognosis means the course the disease takes as it continues to move forward or move in the direction of its culmination. So we, this presentation is basically in English. So those who are interested in listening to the presentation in English can always tune in. Now, let us explore the basic reasons. There can be several reasons. Genetics is one. Then emotional repression. Repression is different from suppression. A normal person is able to suppress unwanted thoughts, unwanted desires. But repression is when you drive it deep down into the subconscious, that you don't want to think about a situation or about a particular emotion or about a particular thought. So emotional repression is there. It is just like, uh, let me give you an analogy, like you apply the brake once in a while while you are driving a car. But in repression, you keep your foot on the brake constantly. So you can imagine what wear and tear will take place in the vehicle. There can be another reason for OCD, and that can be a strict religious background. Normally, people observe standard morality. That is, they're interested in the welfare of others. They would like to do good, but not at the cost of their own comfort. Then there is the, the exalted morality, where you sacrifice your own good for the sake of others. So people who belong to this category, they also suffer from uh, OCD because there is a gap between what they believe in and what they practice. Once you fall short of your own expectations, then there is guilt and shame. And guilt and shame leave you drained out. Then there is conflict in OCD. There is your good self and there is your bad self. There is the Dr. Jekyll and the Dr. Hyde. And you're constantly at war with yourself. Like in Judy Caesar, when uh, Cassius meets Brutus and he says that Brutus does not seem to be giving uh, due attention to his friends, then Brutus says, poor Brutus at war with himself, who gets the show of love to others. So conflict keeps you isolated. Then there is fear, stress, and anxiety all the time. So these are some of the reasons and the products, byproducts of OCD. The environment somehow or the other for an OCD person is very hostile. There is always stress which accompanies whatever he does. So first of all, the environment has to be improved. From hostile, it should become a conducive and congenial atmosphere. Then sometimes uh, an OCD patient, he undergoes work stress, which in a way impedes his normal functioning. Disappointment in love can be another factor because an OCD patient, he is in a way emotionally starved. He is emotionally hungry. When he falls in love with a person, he may become too demanding and in the process may lose that person also. So that is also another aspect of OCD. Then there is lack of communication. An OCD patient is like a lone ranger. He is a lone fighter. He lives all by himself, all alone, confined to his thoughts. So he fails to communicate his distress, his pain to others. Then there is another element that comes in, and that is that of sneaking whisperers. The devil is there, of course, because our religion tells us that he is our sworn enemy. So when he finds that a person is in a melancholic mood, or he is suffering from depression, or he is suffering from conflicting thoughts, then he also starts, you see, whispering evil thoughts into the mind of the person who is 
suffering from OCD. In this short talk of mine, I'll basically be concentrating on OCD Puro, which is uh, related to uh, thoughts pertaining to religion. So the prognosis is, as the patient keeps on fighting his battles, <laughs> he becomes more lonely. So loneliness adds to his problems. Then he becomes, gets, withdraws himself from society because he's so overwhelmed with his conflict that is going on in his mind. Then the conflict reaches such a uh, difficult phase that he is totally drained out. And then here you see he is in the brink of a nervous breakdown. There is trauma, there is panic stage. At this stage, medication may help uh, keep his balances intact or at least give him some uh, threshold. So medication perhaps at this stage becomes necessary. But then, of course, there are side effects of medication and there is the addictive nature of uh, medicine also. He is already suffering from one addiction and that addiction is the addiction of overthinking. Thinking and then again countering the evil thoughts all the time. So there are different aspects to this. Then only when he has reached, suppose, the panic stage, and some medicines have been administered to help him pacify him. Then there is a prolonged period of rest which is required so that he can regain his equilibrium to a certain extent and become open to counseling and therapy. Because prior to this, he was not prepared to listen to anyone. He was so engrossed in himself, in his thoughts, he is fighting his battle. There is a divided heart. There is a divided mind. And the thoughts rush in. Obsession is a thought which keeps on coming again and again. Now, this thought is not a nice thought. And the person who has a divided heart or a divided mind is trying to fight that thought. While fighting that thought, he is making the thought more powerful. The more he fights with the thought, with the ugly thought, the more powerful the thought becomes. So it's a great predicament. Now, as I said, different types of OCD are there, but I'll only be concentrating or talking about OCD Puro. So obsession and compulsion, as I've already explained, that the thought is obsessive, it is addictive, it keeps on coming, and then the person is compelled to resist that thought. He tries to block that thought. He fights with that thought. In the process, he is conflict-ridden, guilt-ridden also. He suffers from low self-esteem, low self-confidence. In the process, he may become a patient of insomnia, he may not be able to sleep because the thoughts keep on racing in his mind. Rumination is once you are trying to counter those thoughts which are arising in your mind. Then, as I said, he is unable to communicate to his friends what he is suffering from because he considers himself responsible for those ugly thoughts, whereas he is not responsible for those ugly thoughts. The thoughts have arisen in him, him. He is trying to fight them out. Now, there are different therapies. In my subsequent videos, I will be discussing those therapies. And also ERP, that is exposure response procedure. That is, first of all, the patient is made to understand what is he afraid of because fear is one of the dominant features of OCD. Then you have to control your reaction. Instead of reacting, you have to come down to the level of response. That is, you have to respond, not to react. Reaction always has an element of wrestling, an element of uh, fighting. Response is that you try to cool down 
And either you evade the thought or you replace the thought with something which is sublime, which is something which is good. But then the entire dilemma is that the patient is unable to do it on his own. He needs help. So we'll be talking about these things also. Then there are different therapies. You can also uh, use this ERP model. Then you can also use uh, uh, meditation, yoga, and so on and so forth. But provided the patient has reached that level where he is a little stable. Then there is the allopathic treatment also, and they administer certain medicines, like L, Galaxy, and so on and so forth. Homeopathic treatment, in homeopathic treatment also, there are very effective medicines for um, curing OCD. So we'll be talking about these in subsequent videos. Thank you very much. God bless you.